The new machine is, um, is designed for a lot more flexibility and, and, uh, and autonomy, and also it doesn't have so much hardware, so when I want to change something, I don't have to rewire toggle switches and ugly things like that. It's just all software. The, um, here's the, the mock-up of the new front panel, which should be going into aluminum this week. One great big 640 by 480 display, backlit VGA resolution, about 16 levels of gray with a touchscreen on it, SAW. And then a uh, 640 by 200 display down here, which is owned by a 68,000 running fourth. And that's called the bicycle control processor, which essentially runs everything. And it's got a SCSI bus that goes out to a, a little I.O. processor that creates lots of bits. And uh, a lot of those end up controlling um, a big matrix of FETs so that all possible audio syncs and sources, all serial lines, all analog lines, all of that stuff just comes into a big switching matrix. And there's these MITEL parts that do it. They're wonderful. And so it's like this big crossbar. And that turns out to be really handy because there's so many things that, well, just take audio for example, there's stuff that I don't necessarily think of at design time that ends up being real interesting later, like being able to pedal down the street talking to a Japanese ham on 10 meters and running a phone patch for him through cellular phone. It's completely trivial. It's one line of code once the matrix is in place. Um, uh, same with touch tone and all that stuff. It all gets switched through the network. So anyway, you can, you can back off one level and see it all as a sort of resource bus that, uh, that under control of the 68,000 takes care of power and audio switching and all that stuff. Um, there are two DOS engines in here. There's a uh, 286 for, uh, for running both mechanical and, and uh, schematic capture CAD packages, uh, CAD key and ORCAD, and also the satellite tracker software and computer-generated mapping from a CD-ROM database, um, which is, looks like it's coming from GeoVision. And uh, the nice thing about that is with the GPS receiver, the bike can always know where it is and then use the mapping package to, in surveyor mode to put a map on the screen with a little blinking arrow saying, you are here. And, uh, and most of those packages now have uh, algorithms attached that let you take individual addresses and locate them on the screen meaningfully. You know, they've got street number uh, coding and all that stuff. So I should be able to find any, anybody's location on there and touch it and get a little window that says, this is who this is and so on. Um, also, the, the yet to be determined is whether or not I can get a database of um, topo data. Uh, it does exist somewhere, but if it's in the right sort of form, uh, then the machine will be able to take that topo data and, uh, with an RTX 2000, make a wireframe model uh, that I can view from any angle and see what kind of terrain is ahead. So those are all very practical things on a bicycle. Once all that stuff's in place, then it makes all the other control fairly easy. The, the transmission, for example, in the new machine is a little dedicated micro that monitors speed, torque, cadence, and heart rate, plus a keyed-in wimp factor that I can put in from the handlebar <laughs> keyboard that says, I'm feeling terrible today, you know, don't, don't work me so hard. And then by monitoring all those things and replacing the manual transmissions with Browning automatics, uh, which can be controlled by a little, basically it's a little gear motor and you can tell it up down. Um, so I've got six bits, you know, and six bits out of the processor can access any of 36 speeds by monitoring the actual conditions of the bike and of the engine. Uh, let's see, communications. There's um, lots, of, lots of new comm gear in the new system. This whole area back here is being replaced by a, another console, although it's not designed to be operated while riding except via remote control through another microcontroller. Uh, a little dedicated 10-meter ham radio, which works great with this antenna. I've talked to Japan and everything just with that on the bike. Um, that, uh, they, they find that amusing. Uh, <laughs> you on bicycle? <laughs> um, and let's see, and a, and a standard HF you know, ham radio gear, plus the cellular phone and an Oscar 13 satellite station. And that has a 450 uplink and a 144 megahertz downlink. The only catch there is I have to stop and deploy folding antennas in order to, uh, in order to work the satellite. And the, the, between the, the, the computer tells me where to aim it. There's a package that already exists called QuickTrack that runs on a DOS environment. And once the machine knows where it is through GPS, it calculates all the Keplerian elements and says, okay, the satellite's here, therefore your azimuth and elevation is this, here's the Doppler shift, and it's all very trivial. And you just crank the radios to the right spot and aim the antenna and got about one hemisphere of coverage at any given time. So I'm probably overlooking a few things, but that's the basic overview of the, of the new bicycle. Uh, bicycles just ain't what they used to be, I guess. I, on the new brain interface unit, um, <laughs> There's uh, I'm adding a few things to this. Uh, still the audio, of course. Stereo headphone jacks built in. Um, better microphone I'm changing to. This lets me feel lightheaded just by throwing a switch, which is nice. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm moving the lights up here. I'm moving two lights up here. And then in the front, 
this is another one of those little standalone projects. I'd love to have help on this one because I probably won't get to it this year. Um, but I want to mount a little horizontal LCD with either just a diffusion screen for daylight backlight or a stray light from the helmet lights, um, and then an optical path that looks like about a four foot long. You know, it'll look like a helmet mounted display is what I'm getting to. So that when you look, I don't want to look through something because the power it takes to deal with a partially reflective surface is pretty substantial. But if I look up into the sky, into what's really a mirror, and then another mirror, and then up to the display, I should be able to pipe any of this map data or, or text in progress or whatever up into the helmet and eliminate the need to have a friendly environment going on so I can see the screen. Having speech output on the system is real handy. Uh, speech input, uh, well, I'll get to that. On the new system, I'm using a new speech synthesizer called the Audapter from a, uh, Personal Data Systems down in Campbell. And it's made for the blind, and it has all kinds of different voices. And so all the different processors on the bike can each have their own characteristic voice when they want to send me a status message. Uh, so it'll be this little rumbling voice in the background that talks about my battery levels, and a little squeaky one that says, slow down, the transmission, you know, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, that's also real handy for dealing with people. One of the, some of the things that this thing says um, under remote control or trigger, when triggered by the security system is uh, do not touch or you'll be vaporized by a laser beam. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, that sounds kind of frivolous, but it's actually very handy to have things that can communicate with people standing around it. Uh, just to, to have remind them that they're being watched in some form and they shouldn't sit on it or flip switches is real nice. And also there's a demo mode that uh, the bike just gives a little rap about what it is because you know, this thing draws crowds all the time, and I really don't like answering level one questions all the time. It's like, it's like a trade show, but worse. So, are you curious about something? Restless? Hungry for knowledge or change? Got a dream? Go for it. Are you going to ride me now, Steve?